All right, what's on the bench today? It is an MFJ noise bridge. This is super old school, um, but uh, I thought it would be instructive. Um, I keep talking about bridges and how, how they're so important in electronics and stuff. So uh, uh, this is a model MFJ202, not the B version, the old, old school version. Uh, so yeah, so what is it? It's got a knob on it. And it's got another knob on it, so it's got two knobs. And uh, this one's also the power knob, so it has batteries inside. Noise bridge, so it must be a bridge and it must have noise. So how does that work? Well, let's first take a look at it. I'm gonna kind of sneak up on it because it's a little confusing, so I'm gonna start with basic concepts first, and then and then we'll, we'll get a little more complicated as we go. So I've drawn a bridge here. You've got, you've got some elements here and some elements here. Uh, this one has resistors and some capacitors. But if you take a look at the symmetry here, whatever's on this side needs to be equal to whatever is on this side. So um, this capacitor needs to be, the, these two capacitors need to be the same. And these two uh, resistors need to be the same. These are already the same. So this one's adjustable and this one's adjustable. So when you put this into operation, what you're doing is you're turning these two knobs. Now, this is one knob on the front panel. This is the other knob on the front panel. So one knob adjusts the capacitance and matches those, and one, one uh, matches the, uh, the resistance and matches those, okay? So uh, the way that this was originally meant to be used was with a receiver you would tune to a particular frequency and you'd listen to the noise, and then you would turn the knobs until the noise was the quietest, okay? So, uh, we could certainly still do that, but I have a better piece of equipment, okay? So, uh, spectrum analyzers can basically be thought of as receivers, right? They have mixtures in them and they mix it down, and then instead of uh, uh, hearing it, you see it, okay? And no, I'm not gonna use zero span, although I could. Um, we're gonna take a look at uh, the spectrum because that's gonna be interesting too. So let's say that we're gonna be, so these things were generally used for like tuning things, measuring things. Let's say that we're interested in maybe tuning an antenna, figuring out if it's 50 ohms or not. And so um, we're gonna be interested in say 40 meters. So we're gonna set the frequency, we're gonna set the start to uh, seven megahertz and we're gonna set the stop to 7.3 megahertz, okay? So we'll do the entire band. So now we're looking at the, at, at, at the band there, okay? And um, what I'm gonna do is I am going to turn it on. So this is the on button, okay? Uh, so I just turned it on and uh, I'll do that on camera, okay? So this is off, this is on, so we have some we have some noise, okay? So it's gone up to now we're around minus, minus 60, all right? And I'm gonna continue to turn that knob and oh, it went down and then I continue to turn it, it goes up again, okay? So what we're looking for is that dip, okay? And so uh, maybe I could, maybe I can get this all on one camera shot here. Let me, uh, let me move things around a bit. Yeah, yeah, I could do it all on one camera, okay. So I'm gonna adjust this one here and you can see up here it's high and down here it's low. So I'm gonna dip it right there. Okay, so it dips there. And I'm gonna grab this one and oh, it goes up there, it goes up there. I'm gonna dip it. So you kind of have to dip one and then dip the other and then dip the other and you dip the other until you kind of get the very, very lowest you can get, okay? And I say it's about there. That's about the lowest I can get on the two knobs. And then just read it off. So this knob says 50, 50 ohms, and this knob says a little bit of capacitance, okay? Maybe 20 puff of capacitance or 20, 20 units. Uh, it says XC, I think that means 20, I don't know. Oh, it's probably 20, uh, uh, anyway, it's some arbitrary, we'll just call it an arbitrary value of 20, okay? But it's a little bit of capacitance, okay? So what am I measuring? So on the back, um, we have where the, is that on camera? Yeah, the, the receiver is, we're going to the spectrum analyzer, then this is the unknown, okay? This is the, the X that I had marked on the, uh, on the, uh, 
schematic there. Let's go back down and look at that, okay? Okay, so this X is the unknown, and that's uh, B and C on the back. So you can connect anything here and put that into the bridge. So that's where you put things in. And then, like I said, these, these things are inside, and then there's noise in there, and the noise, it, when, when these two things are balanced, then you'll have symmetry and the noise goes down in the system, okay? I'm kind of hand-waving a bit, but, 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 but that's what's happening, okay? All right. So, uh, let's see here. Let's go back up to get everything back in the camera again, okay? All right, so uh, what was I measuring? Well, I was measuring a 50 ohm load, okay? So, uh, when I took the 50 ohm load out, you saw the, the uh, noise go up, okay? So, let's put in a different, uh, a different load. Here's a load. I'm going to put that one in here, okay? And this is our unknown. We don't know what it is, all right? And so, we we twiddle the knobs again, okay? And we, oh, there we go. That one's kind of going there. And I'm going to twiddle this one. And you have to go back and forth because they, they interact with one another, okay? And they're a little bit sensitive. They're a little bit, a little bit of a touchy. Okay, so I say about there is about as good as I get it. You could read off the front panel. Well, this one is not 50 ohms. It's lower than 50 ohms. It looks like it's maybe, if that's 25, it looks like it's maybe 35, maybe ohms, something like that. All right, so if you look on the back here, I have put on a, a 40 ohm load, okay? So now I have 40 ohms, and, and we kind of measured 40 ohms, all right? And our reactance is a little bit more capacitance than the other one, right? Because it's a little bit longer, has a, a, a has an, has an adapter on it, okay? Let's measure this thing. I don't know what this is, okay? I'll put it on, all right? And then we twiddle the knobs again. And uh, looking for a dip, oh, there's a dip, sort of. And I'm gonna, oh, there's a, there's a dip. All right, and oh, there we go, better dip, better dip. All right, so you can imagine that this is the volume that you're hearing out of the out of the receiver and you're quieting down. So that's how, that's how it was meant to be back in the old days. All right, but this is, this is better. All right, so now we can read right off the front panel. It says 125 ohms and about the same amount of capacitance and stuff, right? And this is a 120 ohm resistor, right? So uh, that's, that's what's going on there, okay? All right, so let's take a look at how this thing is constructed and uh, we'll get a little bit, uh, a little bit more honest with this picture here, okay? Okay, so here's the schematic for the thing. Uh, it's got three transistors, and I've gone over this before. This is the noise source, okay? So this is creating noise. It's, it's, it's uh, biasing a Zener diode, and that Zener diode then creates noise, and then we're just amplifying it because it's tiny noise here. We make it bigger, 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 okay? So that's what's making the noise. This is just the noise source. So what do we do with the noise source? Well, we inject the noise source into the bridge. So this is the bridge over here, okay? So let's get rid of that right there, okay? Here's the resistor that we were tweaking, the front panel. This is the capacitor we're tweaking on the front panel. Uh, this is the other capacitor and the unknown, okay? The unknown goes to ground. And then the receiver goes into the middle, and it goes into the middle in a strange way, okay? So actually what's happening all right, is um, the receiver actually uh, connects to this top point. That's usually where you inject things. That's, that's usually where you're looking, and you're usually looking at the uh, balance between these two things, okay? That's usually what, usually what you're doing. But this one's a bit funny. We're going to be measuring at this point. It's still a balancing thing. It still has... Uh, needs to be balanced, okay, but we're not injecting anything here. So you're saying, well, how does noise get into it? Uh, I can imagine maybe we have a current here and we have a current here, but how do those currents get in there when there's no way for them to get in there, okay? All right, so this is the trick this thing uses, and that is they are coupled in with a transformer, okay? So these two things are actually coils, okay? And we need to get currents into them, and we're going to get them into, into them by having these 
transformers, okay? These transformers will induce currents into these coils, and that's the way we get, we get the currents into the bridge. And then we just measure here, these are the same, and if, and if these are the same, then it balances out and uh, it, will, it will look good. So um, let's go back and see how they actually have done this thing. So it is drawn different than I've drawn it, but, but here's our bridge. Here are the two things that, that we inject into, and they are actually part of the, of the uh, toroid here. This is a tor toroid transformer, and uh, it has a center tap, which is where the receiver goes. And then half of the bridge is on one side, half the bridge is on the other side. So anyway, it's a clever way to get um, signals into a circuit without touching them. <laughs> okay, that's kind of what's that's kind of what's going on here. All right, all right. Let's see if this thing works on let's say two meters. Uh, we'll do a start frequency of 14 megahertz. And we'll just stop of 14.3 megahertz and we can reach in here and we can zero it out again okay oh there it is and um, the resistance is about the same but our reactants changed a little bit because we went from 7 megahertz to 14 megahertz uh, we have changed we have changed a little bit here okay let's go up to say 50 megahertz we'll just do 50 megahertz and uh, 51 megahertz. Uh, so we're going between 50 and 51. And now if I grab this knob up and I zero it in a, out, okay, this guy, this guy was already zeroed out because the real part of the reactance is not going to change with frequency, but the reactance part of it is going to change. And now you can see that, uh, we have a whole bunch of inductance now, um, at higher frequencies, okay? That's because I've got some long leads and stuff here on my 120 ohm resistor. So, um, yeah, so you can work kind of backwards too. You can set this thing up for a particular setting and then you can sweep your um, frequency until you see a dip and then you can know what frequency that was depending on the settings and stuff. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit crude and um, it's definitely old school, but you can see that our reactants went way up. We're up here around 100 and maybe 110 on this scale, right? And if we go back to uh, uh, 7 megahertz and 7.1 megahertz, and then I'm going to adjust this dial again, now it's dipping right around zero, okay? So you can see that we're seeing a lot of reactants at high frequency, but we're not seeing anything at low frequencies. So anyway, that's basically it. Um, uh, I don't know what much is there to say about it. There's a some documents online if you want to go check it, this thing out. Um, there's a fancy graph that tells you how many uh, how many ohms of resistance for a particular or how many picofarads. Uh, XL, yeah, these are these are marked in picofarads on the front, so I was right about that. Um, so anyway, it, there's a ways to calibrate this thing too, and. Um, but anyway, I, I thought that really the interesting thing is to get the idea across about bridges. And this one has a spin on it, which is that we're injecting, injecting the signals with these transformers, um, which maybe that comes in handy someday for somebody. All right, I was editing the video and I thought, oh, no, nope, better come back. Um, somebody's going to ask me a question about um, how do you measure inductance when you only have a capacitor inside? We're only adjusting a capacitor here, but if we're on the left-hand side, it's capacitance, if we're on the right-hand side, it's inductance. Um, so here's a hand wave. Remember the Smith chart, if you go up, it's inductance, you go down, it's capacitance. So it's kind of along that same theme. But um, what it really is, is remember on the side of the unknown, we inserted this capacitor, why? Um, well, in fact, it's a 150 picofarad capacitor. Why, why is that in there? It, it, why would we need that? Well, on this side, remember, we're, we're putting other things in. Well, this is a 0 to 300 picofarad adjustable capacitor. So 150 is exactly one half of the 300, right? So... Um, under normal conditions, the unknown 
already has built into it 150 picofarads. So if you adjust this to 150, you're right on spot. If you have to add more capacitance on this side, right, it means that you have more capacitance on this side. If you put in less capacitance on this side, it means you have less capacitance on this side. Well, how do you make it less capacitance? This is, how does that work, right? If you're unknown, how do you subtract capacitance, right? And so, all right, it dawned on me, you may have never seen a capacitor in series. Um, so let's take a capacitor here. Uh, we'll measure this one, my favorite capacitor. It is a um, 10, 10 nanofarads, 0 0.01. And I'm going to take another one, okay, over here. And if I put them in uh, parallel with one another, we get half, we get to double the uh, double the capacitance. And you've probably seen a lot of circuits where you have two capacitors in parallel. But now I'm going to put them in series. Okay, I'm going to put two of these in series. And we end up with 4.6, which is half of uh, half a 10, right? There you go. All right, here's the equation for reactants. Okay, reactants is, um, you can have some reactants to do inductance, you can have some reactants due to capacitance, and the total is the amount of inductance you have minus the amount of capacitance you have, all right? And because we have a bridge, um, we're basically equating um, XL minus XC, all right? So one side of the bridge is that, and one side of the bridge is that. So we can either raise inductance or lower capacitance or raise capacitance. We, we can vary these two, okay? And um, if you have, let's say, more capacitance, and so your, your total capacitance goes down. Remember, if we have two... Um, if we have uh, two in series, then our capacitance goes down. On the other side of the equation, then this gets bigger because we're, we're subtracting less. We can compensate that by just uh, raising this, okay? And so the way that it works is that you can vary just the capacitor um, to balance the two. And because you have a starting point, you can go above the starting point or below the starting point. You're either adding inductance or not adding inductance. And that's the way this thing works, okay? So it's a trick of using just a variable capacitor um, and then biasing it up. So you can either have plus or minuses in the equation. A little bit, it's like a teeter-totter. You have a little bit on this side or a little bit on that side. And you balance the two out. I know that's a bit of a hand wave, but I don't want to go into it in depth. This uh, particular video is just kind of about, about this thing and not how, how reactants works. I did a, um, a video once on Smith charts uh, that uh, solves gamma functions and shows you how uh, the uh, Smith chart is made such that uh, the upper half of the Smith chart is positive and the negative uh, side, so the inductances are positive and capacitance are negative and it comes out of this formula because inductances are positive and capacitances are negative um, and that's as much as I'm going to say in this video. <laughs>